Hello, uh, I'm Keith Kelly. I'll be doing, I've been a uh, teacher leader fellow for the main DOE. I've been doing STEAM, STEM, and uh, integrated technology. A lot of my PDs have been based on what I do in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And then I've been doing tool ones on Google Classroom and Google Forms, spread how to collect uh, videos and things of that nature. I wanted to go, and I'm going to do an interview with Amber Chamberlain here. Uh, Amber's our elementary integrated technology teacher. So she's going to talk to you about how she goes between all the elementary schools and how you do this sort of thing. And she's going to talk to you about a couple programs, different things she uses. And that's kind of what today is about. So steammakers.education. Uh, In this, I have different things for you to share. I have newsletter resources that if you go in, there's like grants, way to get money, different things of that nature. I also have, I'm putting the curriculum together so that what's in the curriculum is here. If you want to go, I've been doing the PDs. And if you look at each PD, all the videos are here if you need them. So main do YouTube. So if you click through everything I've done is there, this one will be there I'll, and then I'll put them there. But if you want to click on, oh, okay, teamwork, learning from success. How does he do this in fifth grade? Here's the video. Here's the PD. I put links. I put the slideshows. I'm actually, here's some of the tools, uh, Google Forms and spreadsheets, all clicked here for you to access at any time. This is the one for coding, uh, doing Legos. How did you do that? Um, again, all the videos are there, step by step, how to, to do the work all in here for you to use as you need. Um, I have how I do my skateboard program and basically tools. That's all there too as well. And I've done my eighth grade 3D printing. And in that I have like how to do the 3D printing software that I use that's in there. Today, we're going to do fourth grade with Amber. We're gonna uh, do fourth grade with Amber Chamberlain. And she's gonna talk to you about how she does the elementary school. We have, we're lucky. <laughs> we've, Kern and I have been begging and we've got finally got an elementary. Kern, my brother, does the high school integrated technology with teachers and students. And he was running between all three schools for a while. I'm at the middle school. I'm a, uh, actually a special. So every fifth grade or every sixth, every seventh and every eighth have me. Fifth grade gets me for about 20 classes. Each grade does each 20 classes. And then I have about 50 minutes in each class. Um, and then they get me during the year, sometimes the beginning, middle and end. Um, and then every year, by the time I'm done, I'll have them all. They're coming to me now for, with from Amber first <laughs> second year or this is the third thir year. third year yeah. so now I'm actually going to have fourth and fifth and actually when I say stuff they don't look at me like I have three heads <laughs> when I talk about robotics and basic coding they all have touched scratch maybe with her that she's worked with or touched the uh, Lego coding or Spiros or something so it just adds to it and then when they're leaving me my brother likes he's at the high school he runs a robotics course a broadcasting course. And he works with all the teachers and the students. And he said it's nice because actually with COVID, we had a gap because they didn't have us for a little bit. And so kids that had 3D printing were missing it for me, where now like they've all had it. So he can say 3D printer and they've all had the base of it so that he can start from there. So we're trying to build a whole program. Next, we're going to talk to Amber today. Next time, I'm going to talk to my brother. And when I talk to my brother, he's going to go and talk about what he does at the high school and what, what do you do beyond and how AI and things of that nature are going to work. Okay. So Amber, yeah. talk, what do you want to uh, tell us about yourself and then explain what, how do you actually implement it? With All right. I actually have a slide. So do you mind yeah, if I share yeah, those? Yeah, I'll yeah. share those now because that kind of. Keith said I am the elementary technology integration teacher K through four. So I do elementary. I do work for three different schools. I do Sebastica, Valley Elementary, I do Somerset, which is in Heartland, and then EDS, or at the Dixmont School. Are they all three about the same size? Mm -hmm. Like, what So, Sebastian Cook is our largest school. Uh, they have about 60 less students between each level, so then okay. Heartland or Somerset is next, and EDS is our smaller school. I kind of go by classroom sizes versus students, so okay. Sebastian Cook has four classrooms for every grade level. Somerset has three, EDS, or at Dixmont has two for everyone. And how many are typically in a class? Like, so that's about, depending on the school, and a Dixmont, sometimes get smaller classes from 10 to 12. Okay. And then Sebastian Cook has larger classes, usually about 16 to 18. Okay. So here's a little bit about me. 
and my contact information. If anybody has any questions, they can always email me. Those are my voice. <laughs> so what I do as a technology integrator, it's kind of a mix of things at the elementary level. So I so as a technology integrator for elementary setting, um, it's a little bit different. I don't work just as a specialist. So I do a lot of collaboration with teachers. I um, work with them to integrate best practices and improve learning experiences for all of our students. I assist in planning, engaging, and accessible lessons through technology integration, and I conduct trainings for our staff as well. And then I also do go into classrooms. It's not really as a special, but it, it works out to be that way sometimes. So for third and fourth grade students, I see all third and fourth grade students throughout the year. It's once every other week. We start with things like digital citizenship, and then we do some computer science, some engineering. Uh, we do a lot of Google applications, digital design, a whole bunch of different things. With kindergarten through second grade, it does work a little bit differently. For the first trimester this year, I tried, it was hard to kind of get that schedule worked out because I am at three different schools to make it equitable for all of the schools and make sure that I'm seeing the students the same amount of time. And since I um, separate my weeks, I'm at one, I'm at Sebastica, which is our largest school for a full week. I split my weeks with Somerset and Edna Dixmont, our smaller schools, half. So I'm there two and a half days at the Dixma and two and a half days at Somerset. And so it was hard to fit every grade level in my schedule. So I had to split it up by trimester. So the first trimester I do, I actually do first grade because they are just starting to get on the computers at the very beginning of the year. And so we're getting them on, figure, uh, figuring out what a computer is, what the parts are all about and how to navigate. Kindergarten, they don't usually get on their computers until second semester. Or trimester, so we usually don't start with kindergarten until about December. And then second grade, right now I have them at the end of the year to get them really ready for third grade when I will see them all year. I mean, we do a lot of the coding and robotics with that second grade. So you do get to see everybody at your elementary. So you do some preschool with the entry level, then you do K two, yeah, and then you do third, fourth, but you get a and you you get a consistency of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, it's a little bit tricky. I still am working a little bit on that schedule, figuring out what's going to work yeah. best. Like I know second grade, because it's trimester, they don't have a lot of time. So I might do them throughout the year and just do once a month okay. because there's a lot that goes into second grade to prepare them for third grade so that they're really ready for the robotics and the fun things that we get to do um, in third grade. And you're, so we have three elementaries. So you're traveling between the three elementaries. Mm -hmm. I, do you talk about the schedule? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So a little bit. So I, I do like one week was at Sebastian Cook. That week, because it's my largest school, I have them for that full week. And then the two smaller schools, I split a week. So there is one day on um, Wednesdays, it's a half day. I travel between our Heartland school and our Edna Dixon school, which is a lengthy travel, but it, it's it's the way that works best right now to make sure that I can see all of the students. Okay, so you it's are traveling between schools. You've tried different variations. You're still working on what's best. Yeah. And sometimes schedule, probably holidays or things, it makes more sense to be here at this school yeah. to finish out. And then, but you're running. Our schools are about from the main, where the high school, middle school is, you're the, the one of the elementaries is five minutes away. Yeah. And then the other one's about 15 minutes away. And then another one's 15 minutes yeah. away. But, you know. Yeah. So, okay. And I take my two furthest ones one day and I split them. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but it does it does seem to help a little bit that way in order to, to get everybody in. Okay. I just wanted to, so people knew. So she is traveling. So if you, if this is something you want to implement in your school, it can be done. Like you could travel between, that's what she is doing. In, in the first year too, I did it kind of every other day yeah. and that worked really nicely. It just is hard with some of our bigger schools to fit in all of the projects um, that way. And also logistically, Material wise, yeah. when she's talking about Spiros and Indies and things, the state MLTI, we have enough that and 3D printer and stuff that state each school has their equivalent. Like yeah. you at one time were carrying stuff back and around all through schools. Yeah. So there is some logistics of and you could do that if you don't have enough stuff you could have oh i'm at this school for a week with all the sparrows and then i load them all up and go someplace else but we have enough so when you show up all the equipment is there you're yeah. you're just moved yourself now yep. not the equipment yeah and when i did have 
that as a concern where I had maybe just one 3D printer and I had to move it. What I did to kind of help with that is I would do that 3D unit at that school and I would do something else at the other schools. And then I kind of rotate that unit around. Okay, so you were able to be creative in the sense of, okay, I have this stuff. I'm going to leave that there, mm -hmm. but I'll do something else at the other school. So that just stays there the whole time. Right. And then I'm so, okay. So there's a tricky way of yeah. doing it. And okay. it's nice because then I'm not, you know, lugging everything out every day to go to somewhere else. It can kind of stay. It has a home for a little bit of time. Yeah. And then, well, and it, the state, and if you haven't date, and we've kind of talked about this, I've done it before, but the MLTI has kind of switched from being laptops now to being some stuff. And like for me, for example, they I have Lego essential kit. Uh, I'm sorry, I have Lego Prime kits. We have Spiros. We have Indies. But you, uh, the high school has Coast Base accounts. You could also. We just did a grant. If you'd like to, if you didn't get this stuff, the stuff, the state every year is going to do a grant process, so you could fill in for a grant and say, "Oh, I want Spiros," so that you could build up so each school had their own stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll let you. Know. So I thought I'd go through kind of what each grade level looks like, because I know that might be a little bit different. So kindergarten, I don't really go into the preschool often. It's really kind of an as needed. And same thing with specials. I do go into like music. I've been into music a few times, um, but it's more so like when somebody's looking for collaboration and ideas with a project. We do start in kindergarten with explicit lessons. We do what is digital citizenship, parts of a computer navigation. We talk about the keyboard. We use one of the free keyboard, you know, programs and they love, you know, I think it's type tastic is the one we use and they love it. It's bright, colorful, and it's free. Um, it just doesn't save their levels on their computers, but they're fine with that because they're a kindergarten. And then um, another thing that we do is drag and drop with a trackpad. Um, and the way that I do drag and drop is we play um, sand art. Just they click and they drag something and it, it plays false sand balls. So they're just making a sand art picture. But that's teaching them drag and drop. Yeah. Okay. And good. then um, the other one that we do is a Jackson Pollock, and that's just the dragging. So they're just using their trackpad to move around the screen um, because kindergartners, as we know, they're all fluent with the touch screens, but they're not so fluent with a mouse or with a trackpad. So that kind of so gives them that. It, yeah. It's, and actually moving, a lot of times the games they're playing are they're moving it in within the game, but mm -hmm. they're not independently moving. Right. Whereas you, when you need to move it, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if it. anybody's in, uh, you know, lower elementary, you know, those finger muscles aren't very strong. So that clicking and dragging can be really difficult for them. We also do just how indie art. And I did have one right oh, there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I did remember the indie. I'll be your van. <laughs> yeah. So here's one. And so we talk a little bit about how indie works. Now, indie is our, we don't need a computer for programming it. It already comes with a program in it. And uh, it has three different behavior changes. And when you put it on a tile, and I'll show some videos of the of kids using this yep. too. But if you put it on a tile while it's turned on, it will change three different behaviors. It will change the light, the sound, and the uh, direction or the movement on it. And so with kindergarten, we talk about the parts of indie at first, and then we talk about um the sequences so we talk about you know how we can lay down tiles to create a sequence or create a path um and then we do some indie obstacles and problem solving so they learn how to use the turn on there yeah because yeah, i'll show the progression first and what that looks like because first grade also does a little bit of indie they'll have had it so they'll know like the parts they'll know how to turn it on they'll know how to it works and then we'll start talking more about that coding part and using more of the coding language. Um, In the, we do start the year. The, the indie has a sensor on the bottom. Yeah. And that's picking the light up. And then, as she said, it can move and it can light up. And you have a charger box that comes with it, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Yeah. So, like, as a teacher, you know, you'll get... Like, you usually do a set. How many indies are you running? Like, each kid has their own? Or? Um, we do pairs. So we start the pair programming early. So we start it right in kindergarten where we have a driver and a navigator. And the driver is the one who has Indy and sets Indy down on the tiles. And the navigator is the one who's making the paths and telling their partner. They're, they've they got to communicate to figure out, you know, the, the, I give them pattern um, yeah. squares to go through. So and, the, and that's them. something too, as you do, uh, if we don't have enough for one-on-one, -on -one, if you do your groupings like this, I have a driver, like I do in my fifth, I have a, a team where someone's camera person, someone's master builder, someone's inventory control, mm -hmm. you give them roles, you can take a kit and quadruple it. When I yeah. first started, I only had four uh, Lego kits. Then I had eight. The beginning of the year, I was all excited, I had 20. 
I could still do it um, to, by tricking, do it mm-hmm. by having groups of three that share. I also had asynchronous groups, so kids were doing stuff past with other classes. So you can do if you don't have one to one like we yeah. have. Don't feel like it has to be that. I'll let you. And and going on on that as well, if I have some larger classes um, that have because this only comes um, with eight in the kit, so I only have one at each school. So if I only have the eight and we have a class that maybe has um, one extra student or a couple extra students, we do groups of three, and I just give them an extra role. So we might have like a map reader or somebody who you know um, looks some, at the algorithm. I'll do a observer yep. camera work. So like if you, it was weird because there was times I had groups of four, and I'm like, oh, what do I do? And I did that, started doing that camera thing, and it became. It's, it was funny because a lot of times, oh, I don't want to be the paper person, mm-hmm. but now my academic assistant, they all get to run the camera. So they all want to do that. Yeah. And the master bill is the other thing I would do in the inventory control. So it's, it's kind of funny how it, what they're doing, but you can, yeah. you can, if you have that extra kid that pops in, what do I do? Here's a camera, walk around, take pictures, yep. stuff like that. Yep. So we do in first grade as well, start the year off with digital citizenship. We do some pause and think and thinking about, you know, something doesn't feel right. What do you do with that? We, uh, then go into computer parts and keyboard again. It's a little bit shorter, but um, it goes it goes together this time instead of having two separate lessons. So a drag and drop as well with a trackpad, but this time we're using something like a, like a Google slide and they're dragging characters on to create a picture. Um, then we do some unplugged coding um, just to think about things like left, right, steps, the order, sequences, things like that, um, algorithms. And then we do visual coding, usually do do code.org for that. They have a great curriculum on there. It's free and it works really nicely for our younger students. And then we do Indie integrated unplugged coding. So we don't plug into a computer still with the Indie and we tie in a lot of their literacy with it, or I might do some digital citizenship things with it. Where, where did, so these steps you're doing, yep. did you, are these, where did you get uh, the teachers say, Oh, I'm having, a, my kids are having a hard time dragging and dropping. And that's some of the it came from and also what you noticed needed. Yep. Is that where you came up? Yeah. So a lot of the time, so I'll talk, I talked to teachers. So this is my third year. So throughout the three years, I've kind of picked up on where students are, what they can do at certain grade levels. And then I've also talked a lot with teachers and these are really explicit. This is when I come in and explicitly teach technology, but a lot of this also happens when a teacher comes and says, well, they really need help. I'd really like to get them on Google Slides and I'm not sure how to do that with a class of, you know, 16 kids because they're familiar with it, but they don't know how to share that with a first grade class. Or they might not even be aware that that's something that first graders are capable of doing. And so this was kind of a tricky way for me to to get into classrooms to do some of that. So look at what your first grade students can do with technology. And now what could we do with that integrated in classrooms? And that's why it's also just a trimester. And and that's helpful for teachers because instead of it being a one-off separate thing, Bill, Mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's being, uh, we're teaching it about what you need. I try, and I because I have them all. So what I try to do when they leave fifth, they've all done some video. So if the teacher wants to do it, they know, oh, I can, this is how they, they already know how to do video. And then older kids know how to screen capture and show their work. So I try to do that as I go. So it's not, so they have those capabilities. Now right. you're doing the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of times too, if I know that I'm going to do something like computer parts or keyboard or drag and drop, I might ask the teacher, what is it that you're working on right now? And let me help integrate that. I have this great Google slides and we'll practice dragging um, or you might do drag something. drop with whatever they're exactly. working on because you the skill is what you're same as I right. for me. For me, it's it's not about like fifth grade, I'm doing teamwork, sixth grade, I'm doing uh, digital communication, seventh, I'm right. doing production, eighth, I'm doing prototyping design. It's not about the product, it's about the yeah. process of it in the same thing. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So second grade, here's where we get a little bit um more challenging with the indie. Um I will start with what we do at the beginning of the year though. Again, digital citizenship, like pausing and thinking again, computer parts oh, as we um talk a lot about coding. So we're using indie to um create programs. And then we're going on and we're reprogramming Indie. So Indie is great in that you could just use Indie without a computer. It's mm-hmm. unplugged really. Mm-hmm. Or you could go on to your computer and reprogram it and change all of the behavior so it does something different. For different colors. You instead right. of it, because right now when you get it out of the bottle, yeah. this color does a specific thing. I know purple makes it like spin around. Oh, Green makes it go forward. Yes. Uh, uh, red makes it stop. 
but you could say instead of it being uh, pink, you could pick what it yeah. does, an L or some shape yeah. or something. Okay. And this is all about problem solving for second grade. So when we do our second grade group, I do, I like take way back that explicit teaching and like I might start with these, like on the screen, you can kind of see these little challenge cards that we do. And I might just say, okay, this is the challenge that we're working on today your constraints or like what your rules are is that you have to use the colors that are on the cards. They have to be in the right order. Now you have to figure out how you're going to make that work. So they already know a, a lot about India at this point. They know what most of the colors do. Like the first step here, they are just trying to figure out the original program. How am I going to get it to turn? And so they have to think back about what they know about Indy and get it to turn. So it's kind of a review. And then the, the one on the top, um, that one is a reprogramming. So it actually on orange takes a slight diagonal 45 degree angle, one direction. And what it really needs to do is turn completely the opposite way. So they have to get onto their computer and reprogram it. And I don't really give any help or hints. I just say, well, what do you notice? And what do you think? And they it's, have to. Yeah. Them. And I end up doing that channel where I have them learn some, you know, they do the lesson to learn some simple stuff. They've already learned what these mean, the yeah. colors are. Then you're saying, here's the challenge. Try right. to apply that knowledge. Yeah. Take, okay. It's, yeah. It's make, makers, manufacture, apply knowledge through effort and reiteration, yeah. and then redo it and try to see if it works. But yeah. Yeah. And it's really interesting the things that they come up with and, and how. Yeah. Kids can be them. pretty creative. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do a challenge of uh, who can make the car go the fastest and the slowest. They all think slowest is the easiest one, but it's hard. Yeah. But every year I'll have a kid come up like this year, they came up with a way of slipping gears that no one other has. They'll come up with if you yeah. step out of their way. It's hard as a teacher to just let it fail, let it not yeah. work, let it, you have to build, understand the failure on reiteration is the process yeah. is what you're trying to do. And one of the things too, that I haven't mentioned that I should, that I should, is that I actually have the teachers, they have to be in my class. So unlike yeah. a special where they kind of get planning time, a little sad for them, they have to be there. So I do have sometimes teachers who are more withdrawn. They're just kind of watching the process. They're not quite sure what to do. And then a lot of other teachers who will jump in and try to figure out with the kids what's happening because they don't know either. Yep. They're just figuring it out. I do have some teachers where I have had to try to nicely be like, I I need them to try to figure it out. Like, I yep. really want them to try to work on this because they get so it, excited, I think, sometimes. But they'll take oh, the it's really hard. right over and just do it for It's them. hard as a teacher. You know, our, yeah. we're, we're there to... I've had, when I was making skateboards, I had to learn to let them drill the hole wrong, even though you stand there and you'll say, oh, you measured it right. Yeah. But I realized they learn more from making the mistake than me stepping in. Yeah. But it's a, it's, it's a cultural thing for yeah. us teachers. Have you found as you've been doing it three years, you must have, teachers are getting more comfortable in your own. Yeah. So, and they're asking more and jumping out more yeah. and getting more involved. And also what's happened is they learn. Yeah. So then they feel more comfortable and then they also integrate. Right. Yeah. So we've actually had a couple of teachers who've taken out like the Indies yeah. or um, like they've used Scratch in their classrooms as well. So once I get it in and they realize that it's not quite as scary, then. Yeah, I just want to answer your question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. OK, um, I'm sorry, Corinna. Yes, those are the Indie kits that you, you did. Yes, I'm sorry. I just noticed the question. This is the one the state you the state lets you either buy. You either could get uh, Spike Prime kits, Legos, which I have some right here. <laughs> this kit. Or an essential kit was the elementary kit, which is a little bit more basic, same concept. Or you could get uh, uh, Indies, and we'll talk about Spiros in a second. Or And the high school could get co-space accounts, which is virtual reality. Those were the choices. I do think most schools got something. It was by, first it was by, um, they were saying by school, but then they realized some schools were bigger or smaller. Then they did it by numbers. So like it's the number, you get so many kits or so much you could pick. Some schools picked all Legos, some picked all Spiro, some picked all Indies, some did all co-spaces. It was up to the school. They have been doing grants, redoing it. So if you missed out and you're like, oh, I really wish we had gotten more Spiros or more, you can reapply in the grant and just apply for more of those every year i think that we just got done another one but every year they're going to do another one. i'll let you go on for the next 
So um, I'll just jump right into third grade. Again, I always start with digital citizenship. I feel like it's a great way to kind of go into a classroom. It's like setting the... Well, and there's levels to it. We have a tendency to think we do it once, we don't have to do it. Yeah. A, a digital citizenship for a younger kid. Yeah. Middle school, we have to do phones. And, yeah. and there's tons of kids that can use technology, but doesn't mean they know how to efficiently or effectively or ethically use right. it. And so I we think have to sometimes do it. this is also for the teachers because yeah. they... There's not that explicit, like we're teaching them how to be great uh, citizens in the elementary level. Right? We're like doing yeah. all that social work, but we sometimes are missing out on the aspect of like the technology world and all the things that they're, and, they have access to. Now. And there has been a lot of, here's the technology the kids are using it. Yeah. Again, there's a lot of controlled use. I'm playing a game, I'm playing, I'm watching a video, but then as soon as they get outside of that, they get lost or again, ethically or efficiently. How do you use it? That's something if we always keep revisiting it mm -hmm. at our different levels too, but that's awesome. right. And this kind of, I, I did want to show a little bit of that level. Like first they make a pledge. They talk about their online identity for their first time. And they're really thinking about, you know, what you put out there matters and it affects what you, you know, who you are and how people see you. And then we also talk about the power of words and like thinking about text messages because even our third graders are starting to get phones. And yeah. so thinking about the words they're using and also thinking about things like emojis and how do we show emotion when it's only written text, which then can kind of lead into a lot of really interesting conversations in the classroom and writing. We also talk about altered images, like true and fake things, thinking about um, what we see is not always real. Um, then we get into a lot of Google applications, and this is always based on whatever the teacher is doing in the classroom at the time, and so it's very integrated work. We talk about search engines, how they work, how we can use them. Again, this is very integrated. They always do a nonfiction unit, so um, we, we get into that. And then we have Bolt for the first time. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, with Bolt, it does not work with Indy as Indy does, um, where there's it, you have to be connected to a computer. There, it's all programming. So the students get to see Bolt for the first time. They get to log on. They we talk about the parts of Bolt, and then we do the introduction lessons, which are right in the um, program, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute as well. And a, and a Bolt is basically think of a gyroscope robotic. And they can control and drive it around and you can program there's a light package on them too yeah. get a charging kit they put them in and then they have to connect and they that's you're starting to get how to connect blue to how to connect things that's another level yeah they're used to phones and stuff but this is teaching them that yeah. so it's not it's and we do a little bit of that with indie when we do the reprogramming they have to connect but it's a lot simpler and actually yeah. by making it simpler they make it harder for me yeah yeah <laughs> but um uh, because they can't like select the thing they're blue like connecting to yeah. it just connects to whatever's closest so a lot of times you, we have to show them how to read the label on there and how to connect it and then look for whichever label makes sense yeah. with these they just kind of do a harry potter method where we just like connect to something and then it will pop up and then they can find their robot so and you do some scratch yes we do some scratch we do some digital art uh same thing kind of in fourth grade here is a little bit of their digital art uh, we do digital citizenship. We do more with events, uh, Bolt. So we're talking about events now and they can use different events to do something different with Bolt. Scratch, this has been a really cool project this year. We did 3D design with our bubble lines. I don't know if you yeah. have a whole bunch in here. And we talked about a these, lot about making mistakes. And, and you um, made these in Tinkercad? The, uh, yeah. Yes. So they use Tinkercad to make these. Uh, they had to follow the entire design process. So they had to think about um, an actual bubble wand, what works well with a bubble wand, what do they know about bubble wands. And then they had to draw it, and then they had to get on Tinkercad and play around, figure out all the tools. We and had you to, printed them on a 3D printer. Just like that. Yeah. Yep. And it gives them an introduction to think kind of when later on in eighth grade, I'll be doing more with. Yeah. So that they all have that, then I'm actually creating stuff but that's the bubble wands is really cool yeah and it's really interesting because after they print them obviously or yeah. i print them all they don't touch the printers yeah. in fourth grade but i print them all and then we get to um test them yeah. and we use google forms to record all of our tests to see how they how well or how well how well they worked or didn't work so that's pretty pretty great yep. and then impact of technology is a really big one that we do as well um we kind of look at how technologies change and then sometimes we'll like dissect computers this year we went a little bit into like using AI to create and talking about, you know, what is, you know, what do they think about AI? Is it good? Is it, you know, what should we be using it for? So that was kind of interesting as well. I can't wait. So we, we haven't really had a kid that's gone all the way through you mm. all the way up. And next time we're going to talk with Kern, but 
a kid that has gone, our ultimate goal is when they're in Kern's program, a kid doesn't go, what do I use for a tool? They go, oh, I've done robotics. I've done 3D printing. I've done laser engraving. I've done all these. So they just pick the, be the best tool for the job yeah. or what they make it. And that higher level stuff, I can't wait to have it. It's starting. I say scratch. I say 3D printing. They yeah. go, oh, I've done. It's not a new thing. Right. I then can start at that level. So and you have some yeah. videos. To and show. it's also the introduction of getting them excited. So like my, my kids never even realized, you know, technology would be a thing in, in middle school. And now we do the showcase too, which I meant to talk about a little bit. So yeah. we do the robotics. Once they learn how to create an event, they come up to the middle school, they see the high schoolers do their robotics and then they come down and see um, Keith's yeah. room and all the things that they get to do. And so they're so excited and yeah. so interested in all I, I would that. recommend that too. We do a step up day or we do an activity and they just literally get to come to the school. It's kind of like an internal field trip. Mm -hmm. And you know how you get those weird half days or those off times where they've been testing in the morning. So you can get the kids here. We also, it's the first time they're all together from different schools. So Somerset, Sebastopol, and Edna are in the same. So now they can start seeing, oh, these kids I'm going to yep. bring. So we run a, we basically have VEX robots that the high school has. I'll post a picture in on it. They get to see it. And then they do come down here and do a tour so that they can kind of see, oh, we're going to do eighth grade printing, yep. what we've talked that we've done the bubble wands with. We're going to do some coding with Legos and build a little bit more and, and make skateboards of me. So it kind of, it's really cool. It builds up yeah. an excitement to it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're, so they're very wanna excited. Show I wanted to show really quickly, just because it's easier to show kids actually using this. So these are these same challenges. Uh, this is the first one. This is without a computer. So they didn't have to connect. All right. So this is actually challenge two. So this is them trying to, they've done some programming on this one. So they have to figure out the colors. So they that... have to figure out. So orange was actually didn't go in that direction. So if you can see actually that group in the corner, they're figuring out right now why that yellow is going straight and it should turn to that purple one. So there, if you can see, he's looking on his computer, he's trying to make a change and then he'll do it again. What I find really fascinating is I've done nothing. Like I've introduced it and I said, this is, kind of the program and then they go at it and they they are it, it really is it out. when we first got him because the eighth grade would have never touched him with oh, you yeah. i just brought him in i set him on the table and said figure it out and it was just it was a one period thing the higher kids that's where it limits yeah. but it was just interesting to watch them one uh get some grit and have to try it and all that and, and troubleshoot and that's a it's a really neat little for what it is yeah. okay cool. did right, you so want that's that one I so this one is a funny this is a storytelling so they had they were doing fairy tales in their classroom. And so after we've done all the introductions, they're actually doing the three Billy Goat Scrap. You can see it moving. Uh, the sound, unfortunately, is not it's not working. But if you the, there's actually a kid in control of the camera right now. So <laughs> it has some sound with it. And then it, you can see the goat and the bridge and the troll. And the troll falls over into the water. <laughs> and they programmed those color yeah. LEDs to be that in those sequences. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that was very cool. And so with that, they really were only learned, they'd really only learned movement with the bolts. They learned um, how to change the matrix and then they learned uh, sound. And so that was their ending project to show that they could do all of those things. And I have to say the Legos, the bolts, they do have pretty good tutorial or, or you know programs and stuff already. So we could individually, but a lot of times you can find stuff I don't reinvent the wheel when I do my Legos. I use the Rhino lesson. That's really good. Yeah. So, so this is the Spiro Bolt program. Um, and here at the very top, they have different blocks lessons. So with the third grade, we do the beginner blocks, one, two, and three. And then with fourth grade, we really kind of stick with just four right now. I'd like to kind of move forward a little bit, but four took us quite a while to kind of master with those events and trying to figure out they created a, a game for the showcase and then yeah. they came down and showed everybody their and game. there is value like sometimes we have a tendency i gotta get through Go and sometimes it. like like and then you get a, a, an inch wide a mile and yeah. seven, sometimes a mile deep is is good well like, and what i'm also thinking too is that a lot of third grade this year their big one was events on scratch yeah. so they learned how to do different events with that and so i'm hoping that will kind of transfer next year to our event blocks yeah. and i'm thinking that might that might make that a little bit faster because even if i in integrate the if then i'd like for them to kind of get yeah. a little bit of it and then i'll show you i don't know if spiral will be up here this is yeah oh yeah it showed up so this is the edu junior that's what hooks um into the indie oh and it's picking it up 
Yep. Hopefully you guys can see this. <laughs> it's I think it's coming through, but just double checking. So she's holding the indie up. So it's it's same thing with the spirit is picking it up. And then now that it's picked up, now there's coding and she can tell right. the and this is all picture coding for yeah. our young. It's all kids. icon based. There's yeah. that's one thing that we are trying to do is she does base the icon base, the the some word blocks mm -hmm. where I and when I come up to me. I start word blocks and get a little Python, just a hair. Mm -hmm. And then my brother tries to get some Python and some higher. So it's, yeah. we're, we're stacking the, how to do the code, not just, you know, there. So, right. And so this is all they do here is, so um, if they wanted it to do something other than stop on red, they would move up a behavior. They move up a color. Um, they love the rainbow. And it does work on Chromebooks, but not as well as a mobile device, like a tablet or yeah. um, a phone. And then they also have sounds. If you really want to challenge them, the, the little party sound is is fun because um, it only does one note for each block. So then they have to figure out how to. And, and there are them. tons. I've seen other lessons. Same with Legos. There's lessons like, oh, you can make it so it can play music. Yeah. And if they do it right and stuff, it's really cool. Yeah. So. And this does the lesson guide as well that's really nice i used that my entire first year and now i'm just i mean it's a really easy one to figure out so that's nice and that's one thing i wouldn't recommend feeling like you have to start like just start like even if you just take the indies and start with the basic uh, don't you don't have to do 20 things start the entry level and then she's building a program all the way through there is there is a value in just letting them play too letting yeah. them try it and it not work and we have a tendency with teachers and that's with us is oh we've got to get you know yeah. there's a right wrong answer but sometimes like no let them play let them especially after we came back from covid it was good for them to play and, yeah. and working with it so yeah okay you want to or is that it i think that's all i Perfect. have do like even for digital art just i was going to say really simple things like it's not always like robots sand or in that, anything yeah like yeah steam uh sorry yeah steam uh, makers.education the state is the where the state site under the, I'll have a link to fourth grade and I'll put all this here. And again, I'll link her, her slideshow and everything too. So, cause this is just about kind of talking about what we do and then they'll be there. The state also last summer, we did a Sunday river where we, she trained sparrows. I trained Legos. I know the state's doing some other stuff. Also they have ambassadors. So you could find out the ambassador for your school and ask them to come help you as well. I would recommend one thing's been nice. She's doing elementary. I'm doing middle school. My brother's doing high school. If you can get that T and it might not be a position. It might be the teacher that does this all the time. Uh, some of these live like the Legos all ended up living at MySpace. You get a lot of the Indies and the Spiro. Kern has all the virtual co-space accounts. If you have someone that they live with and they kind of get, you know, where they are and organized. And then also then they can be kind of disseminated as people want them. But, okay. And she's going to share, um, Show you the some of the like the sand box. I think that's the one you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. so it's called This Is Sand. Um, this is for younger kids for yeah, moving. so this is drag and drop. Oops, I'm too far back. So, this is sand. Um, you it's really neat because you can also show them like what other people have created in it. And it's like some people have done a really fascinated work. Um, I once was in kindergarten and they were doing this as sand and we were sh looking at all of them. And I um, said, well, I think some people have too much time on their hands. And it took a little bit, about 10 minutes later, one of the kids goes, I think you're right, Mrs. Chamberlain. Some people have too much hands on their time. Yeah. So <laughs> well, and it, what's fine, it's it's like a wave rider. Kids will get into that. And, and but it also will leave kids will start seeing this as art. So, yeah. Oh, so as they grow, it stacks up right, and that's so teaching a movement. Right. on the keyboard and they have to you know click and drag some of them kind of have learned that if they double click then they can just move it and they don't yeah. have to use their finger to hold on but at first but yeah. at first they kind of they're not quite sure and then this is the jackson pollock one where it just follows their fingers so this is usually what i start with and it just follows it and they can change the color by clicking so they're just learning you know moving it and then clicking so and that's that's cool that's good good look for especially the yeah. younger grades like that's one as for middle school i don't think of some of the stuff the other thing too, though, is you, it's like ty uh, doing typing and doing some basic stuff. They don't, again, if, if they don't know where to start, they'll learn kind of the wrong or not efficient or right, right way to do it. But if you start with this, say, oh, this is how it works. Cause it's, I have to do this. I, um, what happens to me at the older is the prototyping. You now, when you're working in 3D worlds, you can move this way, you can move up and down, but you can also zoom in. So we have to teach them 
I have to add how to get to get around a touchpad and things of that nature. You uh you you talk about this, but it was scratch was the other one. Yep. And I and don't, um, was there another one? I can't remember what I use CS first yeah. for scratch for t- for a couple reasons. One, not every student needs to make account if they already have a Google account, then they can go on to CS first. Another reason that I do it is because it doesn't open them up to the library of all the things that people have made. Because what I've heard from some teachers who did try to implement Scratch by using the actual um, Scratch site is that they just played on it and they weren't actually using it to create. And with this, they actually have to use it to create. What's also nice is she picks units. So like when they come, I've been doing the game unit. They kind of stay away from that so that we're not overlapping. We actually have to talk because library was doing the start and which is fine. But we kind of say, okay, you, if you do the storytelling, you do this one, then we don't, we don't overlap as a teacher. It's really nice because you can watch what they're doing. The files come to you directly and it's great. I recommend this. I set this up as a sub. So if I'm ever out, the kids always have a self-contained because it has videos on how to do it. And everything, and I really like these. And they do have the curriculums with with me. I've I've yeah. practiced it a little bit, and I know um, some of the teachers are looking for something specific. So I don't yeah. always use the curriculum. Yeah. I've also used Raspberry Pi tutorials as well. I can't yeah. know if I can pull that up as, as well. And the kids in fourth grade really like that because it's step by step, and it even gives them like the color block that they need to use. Yeah. To I will have to say, as kids get older. They, if the, the the lessons start to annoy them because they want more independent freedom to be able to, so you have to change your sandbox. Basically, you got to leave it, get more open ended. But by then, for I really like they've been coming to me knowing uh, Scratch is a great way for the word block coding to understand drag and drop and colors and the puzzle kind of aspect. Every and then we start. She by the time they've done using it, um, we start breaking from linear thinking or. How do you get it to say these things? Also, looking at uh, other code that's already done, other games. Um, that's what the gaming design really works well for me. Also, it builds up. Yeah, so this is the one that we use, uh, or I have used in the fourth grade, where they can follow these tutorials. I have them start with the first three, and it's very simple things. Like, all they're learning how to do is when you click on... Um, an object or a sprite, it makes a noise. Or And this is actually great for teachers. This is what I learned Scratch programming yep. through was, the, was these tutorials. Um, and it's kind of really basic. And if you look through, it will tell them, it gives them a symbol. Um, whereas the CS first is a little bit more independent. I, I think a yeah. little bit older. Well, sometimes. they'll have like, you have to read the thing. And then yeah. or what I find is there's a video and then there's a place to do the coding and they have to go between them and yeah. that, they get a little lost. But the older kids can kind of, and yeah. it builds over time. Exactly. And I think this is a great one for that build up because they're still learning how to use a tutorial. It's yeah. just it's step by step. They click, you know, they check mark yeah. each step that they've done. It gives them photos in there so that they can see. And then even with the blocks, like it will show them, you know, yeah. what exact color of and, the block they need. And the other thing too is this is a great, this is great to show your teachers because it yeah. gives them there's always though, oh, I have this time, I can't start my new unit, I can't start this, but I could go through and have the kids do, the, or again, when I'm out with a sub, I never lose time because I can say, here's your thing, you're self-contained, you do this, and it's, I think it's very helpful. Right. So. Well, especially, so like in um, the elementary, as we know, they're teaching every subject, yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, they have to try to squeeze in, sometimes the hardest things to squeeze in are things like science, and so this is a really great way where they're learning about like right now, third grade learning about ecosystems. And so I went in and did a couple lessons, a little bit on what ecosystems were, just because I wasn't sure what, what they had learned in class. And then I said, you have to show that on your Scratch project. And so then they went into Scratch and they had to try to figure out how do I make my animal move to get food or how do I, you know, make it get to the water. Um, so that was one way that teachers can really easily incorporate something like this, especially for a lot of our students who this is something that they are drawn to. Yep. So if they could have that choice or you could write a paper or you could do scratch, you might have some kind of choosing goal. What also happens with us, too, is you, we go between teachers and between mm-hmm. programs like you there. I have I go between subjects so I can find ways of. You know, I try to cross like my kids are making skateboards. We paint them in art. We skate them in gym. So we're trying to. So it's we measure in that. So we're trying to multiple subjects. That's something we current I watch do, too, at the high school where you go between you. You can bridge gaps that people don't think. Is there any? Oh, 
pick one thing too. Like we have a tendency to like they they throw everything because they sometimes they give us features that we don't ever need. <laughs> um, and again, you've learned some tricks with the Spiros of yeah. just one, whoever connects, that's the one that connects and stuff. But it is overwhelming. I would just pick one of the lessons. Same with CS first yeah. or the other. Pick one of the units. Yeah. You don't have to, the first, the CS first unit, the introduction one, I'll do with the kids a little, mm -hmm. the card one. And then I said, I have others that are more independent. You're yeah. on. And what the uh, game unit I do has eight. So some kid flies, yeah. some kid is still on one or two and it's perfectly fine. Yeah. So. Is there anything else that you wanted to show? We've got about five minutes that you know. Okay. Reach out to me. My email um, is just a Chamberlain at rc 19 org um and i'm always happy to you know answer any questions that way as well and i'm gonna i'm gonna share my slide deck again real quick if i can find it is this one i think um let's see so and you can always get to uh, uh steam uh makers.education is my site and i'm keith kelly at main.gov and you can email and that's here too as well and i can i can i'll track down the ambassador and send that ambassador to you all of this information is going to be on my site and I'll add some like your links and stuff. I'll try to add the links to those programs right there. Anything else. And we'll keep adding as we go. If we get done next week, my brother is we're going to do the high school uh, kind of what what do you do once you leave my eighth grade? And we're going to talk about what he does and kind of what our ideas are a little a little bit more about AI because that's kind of the new kind of be the new thing. The push and there's going to be more younger stuff with AI, too. But, but I'll get that ambassador to you. Um, and I think we're about done. Um, this will all be recorded. This will all be posted there. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming.